any questions you might have there still around. I would just um, not like to forget that the development of programs technology, these people who stood in front of you just a minute ago, um, those people who have uh, been working, we had to hire them to find them to uh, do casting. To, and this would not have been possible without the HR team. The HR team uh, who also will be in charge of uh, the ramping up of OB3FT because we are now a very compact team, but with the uh, gradual um, ramping up, we'll have to uh, put some flesh on the bones of the HR of OB3 of three FT, FT. You've seen only a few of them because there are other developers who can not come uh, tonight to speak to you. Now, the development of the programs, the technology is also um, we have a team for, for the IT uh, uh, and technology who will be also uh, have to follow the um, gradual uh, growth um, expansion uh, programs because it will be available for all types of users and globally. So instead of managing uh, the downloading of, uh, of software across the world will be quite a challenge both in terms of technicality but also in terms of security. This is something we are working on already and also there is the promotion uh, team which I'm part of and uh, you'll see a number of uh, the members of this team uh, to tonight and tomorrow is to our purpose is to make the technology available from an intellectual point of view but also to um, promote, advertise, publicize the technology in other conferences and for uh, uh, to like the, the work of the ECAN, of ECAN, of W3C. We try to be present in all these um, sister organizations to um, publicize the Frogans technology and promote it. Of course, with Julie uh, and with Thomas now, you have um, legal development and there are uh, conditions for the use of the um, programs technology by all users. So thank you, Thomas, for being here uh, tonight and for uh, introducing us to this uh, legal environment. Thank you. Uh, good evening to all. So my name is Thomas Pano. I'm a legal expert for IT and telecommunication technologies. I've been with the, the company for all, all about three years, and I'm in charge of the um, drawing up of the uh, legal policies, because when you have developers working on uh, technology on the internet, they end up doing almost of the time uh, something illegal. So we try upstream to make sure that all um, that they remain uh, within the confines of uh, legality. Um, uh, part of the bylaws, we have an obligation to uh, provide a um, legal ecosystem uh, for the programs technology, um, working in particular on the conditions for use of the technology. So you speak of the conditions for use of the uh, so policies, uh, legal environment, but in a few words, could you um, give us some uh, idea of uh, what are these policies, what are the contents of the conditions for use, for instance? Uh, conditions for use is a sp specific aspect for the users, but in particular you have the policy that we mentioned for the contributors we mentioned earlier, which governs all the contributions that are made to OB3FT to make sure that there have no aspects that might be a problem in terms of IP, uh, but also once these uh, rights are uh, contributed, they are irrevocably part of uh, OP3 of T, then the brands, uh, and that's the contrary. In fact, it's when users or uh, promoters of the project outside want to use uh, brands of a B3 and T, uh, so we have to make sure that everything is done according to, to the book. And there's also the um, privacy uh, privacy policy for the science, for the uh, programs technology itself. We need to make sure that the uh, 
uh, privacy of all users is uh, well protected and the uh, also the policy of um, users of the program users um, is uh, that which will govern all types of uh, users and i forgot to mention also the uh, dispute um, settlement uh, policy which um, uh, ensures the protection of the brands and their holders um, in the publishing and registration of uh, fragrance addresses. Thank you, Thomas. So, conditions for use of the fragrance um, technology as to uh, in what sense do they differ from uh, other applications on the internet in general? Um, well, in most of the online services and um, others, there are conditions for use, but here they're containing a single uh, charter or policy uh, in the bylaws of uh, OFI 3F3, which governs all types of uses. It's kind of central um, uh, main uh, policy, which uh, covers all types of uses and governs all uh, forms of uses and, and they, uh, the, 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 the rights and the uh, duties, obligations, and what type of interactions could, there could be with other users of the technology. So it's a system that is uh, organized uh, on a user-by-user user basis, and um, you will have articles of providing uh, for the environment uh, made available to the users by OP3F3, then the commitments of uh, OP3FT to the users, and thirdly, the commitments that we ask from the user to uh, be able to use the um, fragrance technology. So you're talking in the future tense, but it would be uh, important to um, mention the fact that the, the uh, policy is still in progress. Uh, we've got the backbone, most of the uh, bones, I'd say. We know how it will work. We have already established the various sections. There's in what order we'll address all types and categories of users. Uh, but we need to go into more detail um, to be able to cover uh, the, all users from a security and stability point of view. So we're still working on it. It's still working in progress. So every uh, user or type of user, um, I, I know we'll be talking about the publishing chain of the Frogan site tomorrow with Alexey, um, who will be giving you an update on the way you will uh, register frozen site on the internet and how every player individual player can uh, have its uh, his or her place in the, the chain but could you tell us about the various categories of uh, players we can uh, uh, come across in the publishing chain of a frozen site well the publishing chain is 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 part of the three families of users that we'll find in the policy uh, uh, the players like the end user who will be browsing on the site, the uh, site publisher who will be creating the contents and publishing the contents. So uh, it could be also the designers of sites or the developers for the technical sites um, to uh, technically create and practically create the sites. And then you have the hosting um, provider because in the web uh, arena for the contents to be available, it has to be hosted somewhere. Then you may have uh, referencing um, providers or site um, providers who are part of, so who have the, the, the who are covered. Uh, and also you have the registration chain, like for the web. Uh, before you publish contents, you need to address them. And for this, you need a fragrance uh, addresses, uh, which you saw earlier, um, how they work. So to register these fragrance addresses, you have a, a registration chain with the holder of the address or holder of the network. We'll get back to this tomorrow. So I invite you to come tomorrow to hear more about this. But so the holder of an address or holder of a fragrance network will have to transit via a context uh, administrator, which is like the register, registrar in the web universe, who intermediates between the holder and the operator of the database, the uh, FCR operator in particular, who is STG Interactive, who is um, 
working as the operator, uh, FCR uh, operator. And the third family of users that we find in the Frogan's technology um, policy is uh, the, uh, all the, the other types of users that revolve around these um, core uh, users. So, for instance, um, software creators who want to create uh, their software based on the Frogan's uh, technology. Um, um, people who are in the field of uh, communication uh, uh, who want to take advantage of the Frogan's technology to be able to propose um, ancillary works uh, which are slightly to the margin of the first two chains. Thank you, that's very clear indeed. Um, earlier on, you, will, you were talking about um, uh, conditions for a player that have that might have a conditions for another player. So how in this policy, um, how does OP3FT can uh, govern the interaction between the various types of uh, players? Could you um, take the example of the publishing chain, for instance, to illustrate your point? Well, I'll take a more neutral example. When you have two users, if you have an organization with three articles, say, it's all about reciprocality. The first article will set up the set the stage of the environment made available to the user. That's for OP3FT, which makes available the environment which must be used as uh, as it is supposed to be used. And within the articles two and three that follow the first one, there are, if you will, mutual obligations between the various users for OP3FT to be able to ensure some kind of guarantee. Uh, of good use for all uh, the users. It's important that all the other users uh, themselves use their respective part of the technology. And this is where the um, this uh, policy, this user policy is so specific. Because in fact, OP3FT is like um, a mediator between the various users. Otherwise, in other words, uh, it will impose conditions for the good use of uh, programs, uh, programs technologies to guarantee others that um, your use will all be will be in the best conditions. For if I take the example in the registration chain to ensure a holder of programs addresses that they will be able to choose whatever name they want and that they can enjoy uh, for uh, to enjoy this name for their program's address, then to be able to do so, the account, uh, the FCR account administrator, who in provides the registration, must respect this right and apply uh, to the letter uh, any instructions that there would be from the holders side and this is how the articles two and three are related to so this is the way it works in this user policy it's all about reciprocality between the users and not only about uh, obligations imposed by OP3FT for OP3FT it's also a mutual um, how can I say? Uh, there's a, a termination mechanism in terms of um, of default or failure to comply with the um, regulations. So it can go all the way the, to the for, for a user that would not behave according to the book. He might be barred from using the program's technology altogether, because in doing so, they would. Um, um, prevent the other users from using uh, whatever service they're supposed to use. So we can go all the way to, from, to barring someone from uh, using the programs. So it's important to uh, make sure that there is this um, mutual uh, working within the ecosystem and, and very much over the long term, of course. Thank you, but we did um, <coughs> see that it works uh, in the best uh, in an ideal world. But Alexey was showing us earlier that you have these uh, fragrance addresses that we'll get back to tomorrow, um, when it will give give us a presentation, a more detailed presentation. Uh, we'll see that, that we could come up against the same type of problems for the domain names. That what do I do if someone uh, one day? 
use the start using a name that they're not entitled to and 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 they they use my brand in their program's address uh, and this uh, is uh, harming me or they're just meaning to make money or not simply to harm me so what has op3ft planned to do in any case of non-compliance well as you're saying just now uh, the, the problem uh, already occurred for the web and uh, domain name so we uh, found our inspiration in what was existing from this point of view. There's the UDRPF uh, for the web, uh, which is a um, dispute um, settlement uh, system whereby trademark um, holders can uh, uh, take action against a domain name holder who would be using the uh, brand unlawfully. So we uh, use a, a also, this type of UDRPF, which is a transposition of the document published by ICAM, is a UDRPF that is already in application elsewhere in the world. UDRPF, that is the Uniform Dispute Resolution Policy for Program Addresses. So what we did is to we reuse this existing document. We adapted it, we uh, fine-tuned it, and adapted it to the program's technology, so that we can now have the same type of um, dispute resolution uh, system based on the same rules as uh, were known before. And in fact. Um, uh, we're currently um, negotiating this, and David Teyer, who's somewhere in the room, is uh, is in charge of this um, problem. He will be talking to you tomorrow. Um, to negotiating, therefore, with the various uh, um, arbitration centers uh, so that all these um, um, all these providers who see that the UDRPF be respected um, make sure that it can be used likewise with programs so that any holder of a brand who uses this UDRPF um, system may continue to use it with the same efficiency and level of guarantee with um, programs. Uh, UDRP, what does that mean? It means Uniform Dispute Resolution Policy. U DRP. And so it, F is for Frogan, so whereas uh, um, domain name was DN. Then. So, in fact, you're reusing what existed for domain names now uh, for Frogan. So, if anybody uses uh, my uh, brand uh, without my authorization, I can turn to um, this UDRPF uh, with. Uh, and, and turn to this uh, arbitration center, and yes, based on the same, uh, by the same token, you can turn to uh, this um, approved dispute resolution resolution provider uh, to uh, to settle your your case. And there's a procedure that is already published and accessible. And by applying both the procedure rules and the um, uh, UDRPF, you, the brand holder, if uh, your brand has been misappropriated by someone in bad faith, if it was by someone who had no title to the uh, brand, you can either uh, retrieve this fragrance address because uh, by, by virtue of, uh, of this name being used, or you can uh, secure that the address be cancelled. Also, uh, this is something we can tell you more about tomorrow. Uh, Frogan's address itself is composed of two character strings, which cannot be transferred. This is a subtlety of the, the beauty of the game. That is, the, the holder of the of the, this spot is will be uh, the holder of all the addresses of this network. So you cannot transfer one address uh, of your network to another holder because you would have to transfer the whole network when, in fact, the whole network may not uh, be uh, contravening. This is getting a bit um, technical, I'm sorry, uh, but uh, if you don't know too much about the addressing system of programs, it's a bit difficult to understand. Anyway, if you have any questions, you can, uh, in due course, ask me. There's another tricky issue uh, on the internet and the digital industry is, is patents. 
and uh, in particular these um, the uh, technologies that cannot or no longer can be uh, used or exploited because they find uh, themselves with a patent that uh, would uh, preempt their use or be uh, to be or prevents them being used by uh, free of charge so what about the frozen technology um, in this area so to avoid this type of problem because we you, you remember that the bio, the bylaws of O3 uh, FT, uh, the technology should be available to all for use. So, if in the technology there's a patent or an IP right that involves a fee for the use, then it's no longer in compliance with the uh, bylaws of uh, OP3 FT. Therefore, to be in line with this uh, uh, provision, OP3 FT is very vigilant. Uh, careful about this, uh, we check that there is no um, uh, components of a technology that may be uh, otherwise um, covered by IP rights or a patent elsewhere. So this is our first effort, the first thing we're very careful about. The second thing we take care uh, to do is to have um, is that the whatever contributions are made by people outside OP3FT, any contribution contribution to the frozen technology should be made by someone who owns the entirety of the rights on the respective contribution, because we don't want to have a contribution that would be um, carrying a virus, uh, if you will, uh, uh, from elsewhere. That would um, that would uh, defeat the purpose uh, afterwards, and it would preempt the free of charge use of and um, dissemination of the uh, technology. And we also have a participative uh, participative uh, um, mechanism, whereby we ask all users to be themselves vigilant and careful and report any. Uh, with a system that we'll put in place uh, to report any um, problem, uh, any type of um, non-compliance or element of code of, or technology that might be covered by some other IP rights or patent, or for a user that would himself or herself be uh, the owner of a component uh, in the frozen technology, we ask them to report it so that OP3FT can have the time to either remove this component or integrate it uh, 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 with the agreement approval of the contributor who would agree to uh, make it available uh, as a contribution. So it's in this ensures that the technology continues to be free of charge and available to all for use. So, except if there's a contributor who uh, allows OP3FT um, to use this uh, technology uh, covered by a patent, in fact, you're only using open standards. It's uh, by uh, our statutes that we use open standards so that the technology can be uh, distributed as an open standard. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you very much, Thomas. So, I think we're back on track in terms of time, which will allow us to take a few questions. You can either ask questions um, to Thomas if you have questions on the legal environment or uh, technical questions for our friends who were on stage earlier because for uh, questions of time uh, I did not leave any um, space for the questions but now the floor is yours if you have any questions. Good evening, Sufi from Kipalat. You told us earlier that you uh, developed the technology with um, the uh, aim also of um, barring uh, malevolent uh, publishers. In fact, he was not saying this, Alexei, earlier. Uh, I speak under your control, Alexei. You, you can answer the question. So he said that the frequency technology would not allow a uh, publisher to know everything. Uh, well, we have lost the sound suddenly 
from the speaker. So, in fact, the publisher cannot uh, dispense of the uh, cybernaut uh, install uh, any uh, spying systems that would allow them to know what Frogan site they are browsing on or something that would uh, be uh, running uh, without them the knowledge of the user. Uh, if you want to have, if, if the, the publisher wants to have any uh, information about the user, the program site, he will have to go through the procedure, the, the disclaimer procedure. And also, uh, this technology uh, prevents any uh, 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 there's, there's a strict uh, HTML uh, language that prevents uh, anything that would be um, outside the technical specifications to be included. I don't know if I answered your point. Uh, yeah, but you were talking about uh, secured contents and protecting the users against potential attacks. So I don't know how it can work. How can you block uh, up front about the security of the Frogan site? Maybe Alexey is, uh, is uh, better equipped to answer. Yeah, <clears throat> talking about, I don't know if, if this question of the um, protection of a user versus attacks that would come from a site of publisher, there are different strategies to implement to get there. The first one is via the network. You must, because when you, a user logs onto a site, they go on the machine that was declared as uh, hosting the contents of a publisher. So we don't go to B3FT or the FCR uh, um, administrator. We go to the place where the contents is declared. So we go on a machine. We don't quite know what is being hosted, who maintains, operates it. And this machine can start to behave in an uh, untoward way, in a way, in the way it uh, answers. It may have some spoofing strategies by um, uh, uh, sending information that is not expected by um, so uh, the, 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 the trick here is to try to control in terms of from the protocol level to make sure that the uh, our software applies the protocols as they are defined and does not carry it away into something that would not abide by the protocol. There are many attacks uh, that will take place at this very uh, position that is at the protocol level. So when we do a technical implementation of the uh, Frogan's player um, software, we check the standards. We just don't buy um, off-the-shelf uh, components or free of charge, and we'll see later. No, because that's the, the best where to get a uh, Trojan horse inside. So this is at the network level. Next, you have the, the next level up, that is to develop a um, Frogan site, as we'll see later. There's a programming language, uh, a description language, more appropriately, which is called the FSDL. And this uh, language, as Jean-Manuel just said, this language refused to take um, on board any scripting systems. For instance, in the web, scripting is JavaScript, which allows you to do l many things uh, on the web in addition to HTML or style sheets. But it's also um, uh, a Trojan horse. It's, it's code that you download. Most of the, the websites of today are dynamic. So you introduce uh, source codes that are executed, executed at the level of, or run at the level of your page. So the W3C um, is very careful that JavaScript cannot see everything, cannot record uh, your files on your terminal, but they still do quite a lot of things. So we constantly find ourselves uh, uh, realizing that they've managed to uh, short secret us. So uh, we uh, have to find a new way to parry their attacks. And we have a third level of attacks it's on the contents themselves. That is, when you download images uh, from a server, these images sometimes are not well formed. And this is um, wittingly uh, because so that your uh, image uh, um, decoder will uh, fail because the image is 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 tricked is 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 um is bugged in a way uh, when and so when uh, this happens a number of instructions will be run uh, and this is a type of uh, attack that have happened in, in in the past also in um, 
uh, character sets uh, on the web. You can download a character set for a better um, layout of the, the pages. And we've seen attacks on PDF files um, where there was an attack on, to, on the uh, character decoder of PDF on a very well-known operating system. So all the data coming from the outside will are analyzed either at the protocol level or or even the level of the image resources, they're analyzed and they are subject to, um, they are subjected to passes, that is, uh, dedicated um, uh, software. Even XML, we don't trust it uh, uh, on the face of it. We've developed our own XML parser so that we're sure not to be um, carried away in any, uh, by any problem. So the fact that we do it ourselves gives us lots of portability to our developments because we're less prone to depend on uh, live Libraries or already installed uh, software on your uh, phone or any other device that you may be using, tablet or PC or Mac, because all these components um, are delivered with Frogan's player. This is uh, the last example I could give you. Um, uh, the, you've seen all the t protocol attacks on. Uh, security, a protocol security library, an SSL library, which showed that you must be able to um, respond rapidly. So OP3FT is uh, keeping a close eye on all these implementations to be sure that the Frogans technology, as it is implemented and, um, uh, on the, the terminal of the user, will not uh, cause any uh, behaviors that they would not be in control of. So it's an ongoing work. I mean, uh, uh, any choices, implementations that we make are done with this in mind. All the defaults are monitored on an ongoing basis. We do unit tests to check that, for instance, in the image decoder, we inject images because we we know them to be both. Those that have been used for, for attacks, they are uh, exploited um, at OP3FT that they will not cause any harm. I hope I have answered your question. Yes, but I was thinking about content in actual fact. Well, malicious content, if you write a horrible thing in a Frogan site, no software can withdraw it. But it all depends on the level of horror. If you're in Gilligan, for example, the user policy that Thomas spoke of earlier will prevent you from continuing to publish forever. So there are coercive measures via the operator, via the address, which may remove the uh, address in that case. So it'll be responsible just like the host services provider. Well, I won't speak for legal expert, but in that chain, I believe that we're not two really operators because we are de delivering a publication technology. The World Wide Web Consortium is not responsible for websites and what's published there. But we want to ensure serene use for end users, as Thomas said. In that case, if we're talking about ascertained illegal content, we can ask for the address to be removed from the regis registry, which will stop any publication. Thank you. I just wanted to stress that I found all of this a bit paradoxical with the neutrality you spoke of. Yes, but we're talking about rights, not respecting. It's not about saying that I want people to do what we want to. People must just abide by the law. You can always. Uh, well, anyway, we have no choice. The fact of being localized, being an organization with a technology, that forces us to adopt this approach. You know, the problem of the, the uh, Forgan's user policy is that for the vast majority, if not all end users with, of the internet, 2.7 billion people, that doesn't concern them because all the opportunities and their commitments are commitments that you would take naturally. This policy exists only for the small portion of people who carry out illegal activities, spoofing, phishing, with illegal content on the internet. And that's all. It's basically used only for that. But in our case, we didn't want to leave that situation untouched without any possibility of recourse. It's just one small plus that may change a lot. Thank you, Alexi. 
Hello, I'm Stefan Montgilbert. I have a question for the technical team. I don't know if I need to bring everyone back up on the podium, maybe not, but you presented in great detail the development of uh, OP3FT. In other words, that part of the system that enables publication of science, multi-platform operations, and so on. But you also have the registry part, the STG Interactive. Just like we saw that the development of the user part was based on existing techniques, clearly to enable or to make it very easy or to make it very portable with respect to what we have today. My question is the registry or the naming system, was it developed in the same way based on existing standards, I mean, so that companies that are already in this ecosystem, registration offices, sellers of domain names and so on, so that they can uh, piggyback on it or use it very easily. Maybe I should give you my answers. As for the registry, there's no real invention. They're looking at me, I believe, with their eyes wide open and ready to kill me. But in actual fact, they, they set up powerful database systems to ensure the resolution of four gun sites around the world. But OP3FT goes a bit further in interacting with the registry. It will define the conditions for using the registry, and OP3FT in particular makes arrangements for the technical specification, specifications for the FCR's API. In other words, the platform where accounts administrators with the database will be able to make their registrations. As you said, if I'm a registrar and I'd like to uh, to address Forgan's addresses, it's OP3FT, which should make the interface for me to make sure that the registry is accessible to all. And in fact, it is through an HTML interface that may, in the near future, be facilitated thanks to software developers. But it is the OP3FT that will ensure, as you said, that an existing reseller or a newcomer who'd like to reserve Frogan's addresses may do so easily just by connecting to a uniform interface. I'm not saying it's simple, because it's a job on its own to register for GANs addresses, but at any rate, it's universal. I don't know if I've really answered your question, or if someone would like to add something to my answer. But OP3FT crosses the bar of that registry. The database, don't forget, belongs to the OP3FT and not to the trading company, which is only entitled to operate it technically and commercially depending on the delegation contract we spoke of earlier. I'm looking at the clock, and I suggest we move on to the next presentation. Thank you.